Good morning everyone. It's a uh, cold. I think the car says four degrees Celsius, but very beautiful morning here in the mountains of Scotland. There is some rain in the forecast for tonight and I do look forward to that. I hope you are looking forward to our next adventure here in Scotland. Yesterday I left uh, for good the Isle of Skye and now I'm heading north towards Torridon first and ascent later. I've already been there on this trip but I feel like I left some spots behind that there is more potential there so I want to go back check them out before moving on farther south. So grab a cup of coffee or tea, buckle up and let's do this. The first spot I wanted to revisit was this beautiful road, Bilak Naba. The road goes to Apple Cross, but it goes through this mountain pass. And it's, it's kind of cool. The road is not too bad, but it gets narrow in places. So if you're driving a big caravan, RV or whatever, yeah, it can get complicated, but it's just fine in a car. I'm going to turn it. So the first time I was here, the weather was very different. It was very bad and you couldn't see the top of those mountains. But I think that made for better photography, to be honest. There is not much that you can get from here, from ground level today. Although I'm going to go to the top and maybe I can get some of the road. But I think my biggest uh, hopes, my biggest, uh, my best chances today to, to take some good photos is with the drone, to be honest. To get high up and get a photo of the windy road navigating the, uh, the, the past mountains.
You may or may not remember this beautiful tree from a previous video of mine. It's one of the spots that I wanted to revisit because it's one of those special places that you want to see in different conditions to see if, uh, if you can find different compositions and new images to make. This is actually my third time paying a visit to this beautiful tree because I was here last night. It was different, it was rainier, the atmosphere was a little bit more dramatic and more moody. I took a video with my 360 camera. I was talking, I was explaining what I was doing, but you can't hear anything. So I decided to come back and record a new video and maybe find new images. I indeed, I did. This time I took it from farther away, embracing the road, something that I did not do the last two times. So I saw something new and now I'm trying to, to come up with something else. But this thing is all about that tree and mountain in the background, the balance between them, how close you want uh, to show them, how far apart. I've been playing with other elements like a rock in the foreground, this one right here. We can play with different focal lengths. A longer focal length is going to make that mountain look bigger. A wider angle lens is going to make that mountain look smaller. So the uh, balance the, of, uh, you know, of the uh, importance of those two elements in the image is going to change depending on the focal length. What I'm doing right now is I'm using the zoom lens uh, to, to, to test all of those different focal lengths. And when I find something, well, I can take the picture with the uh, zoom lens as well, but I also have a bunch of prime lenses here at 1.4, trying to separate that uh, tree a little bit from the background because today is not the best light, it's not the best atmosphere. As you can see, the mountain is pretty dark, so there is not a lot of contrast between the tree and the mountain. So shooting this uh, 1.4 should help a little bit to make that tree stand out. Even though switching lenses in these conditions is not ideal. Thankfully, it's windy, so the rain is falling horizontally, so you just have to give it your back, you know, and should be fine. I'm gonna shoot with all the prime lenses I have right now here with me and with the one that I'm using with the video camera. I'm gonna show you the differences between all those focal lengths and the very different images we can make depending on which one we use and how that affects the, uh, the, uh, the meaning of the, of the photograph and what the tree and the mountain represent. Now, because of the nature of the landscape around the tree, I can't get the, same, the exact same composition with all the different uh, focal lengths because it's not even. So with wider angle lenses, when I was closer to the tree, my best option was to place the tree high in the frame because I was very close and the terrain, well, is what it is. But now that I'm farther away and I'm shooting with an 85 millimeter lens, I do not have many options here, but to place the tree against the mountain. I cannot, you know, contrast the tree against the sky because the terrain here, it's uh, more elevated. So I am, uh, you know, pointing the camera down. I don't have many options, but I think that the images speak for themselves and how different the different focal lengths can make the same scene look. Uh, it's not a matter of, you know, which one is better, which one is worse. They are all beautiful in my opinion, but they just show the tree in a very different light. So with the wider angle lens, when I was getting closer to the tree, the tree was bigger than the mountain. So the, the tree was the dominant force in the frame. So you are emphasizing the, the tree itself. When you are doing f uh, longer focal lens, farther away from the tree, the mountain all of a sudden becomes bigger and the tree becomes the more fragile element against, you know, that menacing giant in the background. So. It comes down to how you want to show the tree, what you want to say about it, how you want to portray it against the landscape, and how you want to contrast it against the surroundings.
It is chilly this morning here in Torridon. The car was saying two and a half degrees Celsius. I'm still wearing my light and very thin uh, summer jacket because I'm on a hike and it's gonna get uh, uphill very, very soon. So I am pretty sure I'm gonna be warm enough. Today I'm trying to do something that I wasn't able to do last time I was here in this beautiful landscape of the Torridon Hills and is to do a proper hike. The weather wasn't the best. This hike is going to be nine miles round trip, probably 12 if you count for the uh, times that I'm gonna have to uh, go back to retrieve the camera and some 2,000 feet of elevation gain but it has no ridges, no cliffs, no nothing. Uh, it's a hike that goes in between those mountains and ascends to a beautiful lake with a view of a coir, coir, a cirque, a glacier cirque. So it's supposed to be pretty beautiful. I'm starting it early because that way I was hoping to avoid uh, the crowds and also because it's supposed to rain later in the afternoon. I'm very excited, so let's do it. Well, my 360 camera's battery died right away. While I swap it for a new one, I'm just gonna show you, a, 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 I think a very cool image that I made here the first time. I was actually at the parking lot. I was surprised to see it, but when I got there the first time, there was a big buck, a big deer, just hanging out there at the parking lot, begging for food from visitors. Uh, I learned later, that uh, locals actually bring him uh, buckets full of vegetables. So that, that's a very smart deer, I guess, even though there are signs that uh, clearly state not to feed the deer, but people do it anyway. In any case, that was a rainy day and there were some puddles on the parking lot. And uh, at some point I realized that the deer was at the perfect place, at the perfect position while, you know, he was eating those uh, veggies for me to take a photo so I got down to the level of the paddle and I got an image of the deer with the reflection of the deer on the paddle and a little bit of the mountains in the background and I think it's one of my favorite images so far from here from Torridon. I really like those two images I made of the deer and that goes to show that you know you just have to be well first patient and second be looking for that special angle because I was uh, making a lot of photos of that deer when I first arrived there but none of them really worked my best try before that was like a silhouette because every other shot had like you know this was a, at a parking lot so it, it had a, a either a car or a person in the background or something very, very busy. I guess I got lucky that that local came and threw all of, all of that food uh, to the side of the parking lot. So the deer got out of there. Anyway, talking about photography, I haven't taken a single photo today just yet. That is not something I like because as I always say, I try to, to start my day by shooting a couple photos, even if they are bad, just to get my uh, creative uses going. I haven't done that this morning yet. I mean, I guess I'm shooting videos and that counts. But yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be able to achieve photography wise. When you are in a beautiful place like this one, when you're doing a beautiful hike like I am, it's very easy to get tricked by the obvious uh, photos, by the obvious vistas. You know, this is a, a very open and vast place. So the, your eyes are catching all of it at the same time so maybe your your mind your brain is tricking you into thinking that the photo has to be wide with, uh, made with a wide angle lens but there are many things that we can find here for example i really like 
the patterns on that mountain that the rock is uh, creating. I don't know what the name is of that rock. I guess it's the Torridon rock. But anyway, it's only on the mountains on that side. And it's kind of cool. And I took a few photos the first time I was here. The day was much better. It was rainy, cloudy, foggy, so it made for even more abstract photos because with a long telephoto lens you can get really close to those uh, patterns, to those rocks and, and go abstract and uh, yeah, confuse your viewer and make them think about what they are seeing. Are they seeing faces on the, on the slope of the mountain or what, what is it that they are seeing there? I think uh, it makes for interesting images and something different from, you know, the obvious open vast wide-angle lens shot. There's nothing wrong with taking that shot, by the way, it's just that there are more things and we should keep our mind open. Well, I'm almost halfway there, uh, still a long way to go, but I'm enjoying this quite a lot. It's, uh, it's the perfect weather and I like trails like this, you know, it's not too steep, it gradually ascends and that is very nice. And I also like the fact that it's not, there's not going to be any sketchy ridges or very windy conditions or anything. I'm just waiting here for a little bit because I just ran into a naked man hiking, so I'm giving that person a little bit of space because I don't want to get him on tape. As I said, the weather was not the best a few weeks ago when I first visited Torridon. So I wasn't able to do hikes like this one, but what I was able to do is to go on a short walk to Loch Clare. It's a little bit farther east from here. It's a beautiful place and you get a beautiful backdrop for those photos. The problem is that you don't have access to the actual lake. It's very steep and there are only a couple of beaches there that are not that interesting. But I did find something, one tree that was standing there beautifully at the shore of the lake and I was able to capture it from the actual road. That photo, that place is one that I wanted to revisit this time because as I always say, a landscape, a place, a subject is never done. I actually have a video that is titled that way. I wanted to check it out in different conditions and that's what I did yesterday. This is Loch Clare, just at the feet of the beautiful mountains of Torridon, as you can see there. I am trying to take a photo that I already took a few weeks ago when I was here for the first time of that beautiful tree. The conditions were pretty different. I shot that photo straight on with the tree just below that mountain. Now I have to, I had to come a little bit to the right to make room for the tree so it doesn't overlap with the uh, reflection, the shadow of the mountain on the lake. I think it's going to work well and this way I have two shots of the same scene. It's uh, very important to revisit the same places over and over because every time is different. Oh man, I forgot to put the ND filter on. Oh. Okay, second time, here's the charm. There you go, that worked better.
I was a little bit concerned about the crowds. I thought this was a more popular hike. Uh, it's a Sunday morning, but there's no one here. It's just naked men and me. Uh, there were a few cars at the trailhead, so I was expecting to see more people. But I, I'm guessing that maybe they came last night and maybe they were camping for the night. So I might still run into more people. But so far, I've had the whole place uh, to myself, which is awesome. I'm gonna take the uh, polarizer out, see if I can play with the reflections of those little lagoons. I just want them to be uh, brighter than the rest of the landscape. I was very tempted to take a long exposure here, but I think the clouds look almost already like it's a long exposure. It's pretty overcast, but they have that pattern, you know, they have that, the shape is kind of like, they, they have some motion. What a view, no matter where you look. We just, we are very close. We just need to go around that and, and we'll be there. Well, we have a rather unsurprising plot twist. It's raining.
just wow, what a place. But I gotta say that what makes this place incredibly, incredibly beautiful, it's not so much the lake and the Cirque here, but this. This view is incredible and unreal. Well, I'm back in the car. That felt pretty good. It, it was a nice hike. It was beautiful all the way there with great vistas. The uh, The grand finale was uh, pretty good as well. I wasn't that hard, you know, it was a, it was a long hike. Uh, let me see, I think it was just shy of 10 and a half miles. Uh, as I said, uh, this hike is, I think, rated at 8.8 .8 miles. So the excess that you see there was from, yeah, uh, walking back and forth to, to grab the camera, some exploring, some photography, almost 2,000 feet of elevation gain, but it's very gr gradual. It's just at the end that it gets a little bit steeper, but not too bad. Any case, uh, it's lunchtime. I'm gonna enjoy this and then gonna go somewhere to take a shower. Well, it looks like I just moved on after that shower. I didn't record a video to say goodbye or anything. So here we are, weeks after my uh, visit uh, to Torridon, a beautiful place, one of my favorite here in Scotland. I just wish I had a little bit more of time to uh, go on more hikes because it's, uh, it's an amazing place and uh, and one that I cannot wait to uh, visit again. These videos from Scotland are a little bit longer than my typical uh, videos because uh, I show footage and images from uh, several days. I hope you enjoy the uh, format. I can only assume that if you made it this far in this video you enjoyed it and I can only thank you for watching it, for your support. There are still many more videos uh, from here from Scotland. I hope you're not getting tired of them. I will see you again very soon. Until then, thank you so much.